Okay, everyone, now you're going to hear something very shocking. But writing a paper for this class is actually lots of fun. Yes, you heard that. Lots of fun. I mean, not lots of fun like that guy behind me in Colombia that's pushing some Coca-Cola bottles, but a little more fun than that or funner. So what's the point? Right here, I'm in a submarine in Colombia. It's actually, I took a picture I was a long time ago. And look at the pictures. It's obviously a Soviet submarine. You see Lenin and you see all this stuff. You see the Cyrillic alphabet, right? Very interesting. What kind of paper, what does that have to do with the paper? Well, one paper. Why did the West respond so strongly to the invasion of the Ukraine, whereas the West did almost nothing when uh, the Russians, it was a pretty brutal war in Chechnya, and there were a lot more than one, two, three, four. Um, why? This is just the beginning point of some of the interesting papers you can do. Uh, students have reached out with ideas. You know, what was our foreign policy, that is from a U.S. perspective, towards Russia during the Cold War? And now, is there any variance, you've heard that word before, in these two cases? Cases can be time right? You could do anything that's extremely interesting to you. Uh, you could do one case study, like what we call an exploratory case study, right? Uh, we talked about Bashar al-Assad. If you're interested in, say, global politics, you could do something on why one leader has survived and the other haven't, why one country has had a revolution and one has not. You could do something on law. Why was, for example, Casey Anthony found not guilty where Jody Arias was found guilty? There could be uh, very um, salient interacting variables for this. You could also do a more interpretive paper, propaganda, propaganda You know, during the Cold War, propaganda during World War II. If you took my POS 160, you remember Donald Duck trying to get us into World War Two. So what you're basically doing for the final paper is you're doing any kind of methodological approach you want. So you could basically do a case study research, right? That could be these interacting variables, why something happened, right? Like why gender violence is less in one country than another. You know, why, um, well, we could go the why question for like just about anything. That's what makes it so exciting. Uh, you could do a more interpretive method, like when we get to O.J. Simpson, how they kind of socially constructed O.J. Simpson, uh, as you'll see in that um, series. Uh, and you can skip around, you can see parts of it, et cetera. But the best, most important part I really like is that they go into O.J. Simpson's house and there'll obviously be discussion board questions on this, and they rearrange the... Um, the photos, the statues, and everything else in order to create a different image of O.J. Simpson. There's just so much. You could do a descriptive statistics. You could do survey data. One person asked me about how come they didn't predict the midterm elections. That would be interesting if you go into survey data. But you do need a methodology. So you want to lay it out in a way where you go, you know, what's the topic, number one, right? Number two, what's the methodology and why? So then you would lay it out like, okay, this is an interpretive paper uh, because I think propaganda for the Iraq war, for example, discourse, Operation Freedom, et cetera, was very important with whipping up the masses, getting them emotional, et cetera. And that like was related to 9-11. You could do a qualitative case study. Oh, I'm comparing these two cases. Um you know, when the United States, uh, the United U.S. foreign policy towards Russia in the Cold War versus U.S. foreign policy uh, in, in the current times, right? And I think this comparative case study is valuable because we can see if there's variance between the two policies. Maybe there's not, which is totally fine. You need justification as well. Why is this important, right? Think, why is this important? You know, if you do a, a paper on a, on a court case, like Rittenhouse, how they allowed discourse, like you could use the term looter, arson, et cetera, but not victim, 
you know, why is this important? I mean, it's pretty easy. Why? Because this is a court case and court cases set precedent and things like that. But you still want to say that right in the article. So you basically need what's the subject about just the main theme first paragraph, then a methodological section could be a paragraph, two paragraph, three paragraph, depending on, you know, how much. And then, you know, within that methodological section or the, you know, where you want to put it, you have to say the justification. Why is this important? Right. And you could actually do bold like that. Uh, you definitely want that. And then you basically, you know, begin with the paper after that. So you then you start saying this is the written house case. You really get into it. And then you study the importance of discourse, why discourse is important, and then how it's applied to this case. Same thing with, say, process tracing and case study work, process tracing of these interacting variables. You're interested in, just to borrow a uh, case that I did, Pedro Castillo. Why was Pedro Castillo overthrown so rapidly? And then you get into all these variables that led to his downfall. You could do one case if you think it's really good and you can do a really Real meaty paper. Uh, two cases is good. One girl did a really good paper a while back. Uh, it was really long though, so you don't have to do that. But she's basically like, you know, did it. This isn't a cake cup, by the way, with beer. It's just got Russian vodka in it. Um, but, the, you know, she did a really good paper where she did, compared the South, South Korea to North Korea and how their economies. Uh, kind of separated that variance, why and when and and how the South was able to take over the North, economically speaking, because the North was originally more industrialized than the South. And a lot of people don't know that. And she explored that. And then, as you can see, my hands, that's why this variance, they're going in different directions. So the paper in this class is actually not as difficult as you think. I know, like, it's, it's, um, intimidating research methods, empirical political inquiry, we call it, but it's essentially research methods. So this is really interesting. So you can pick, I think that it's a good strategy and I hope you like it, uh, that you can pick any subject you want, right? Some people like guidance, but I want you, you know, what are you interested in in life, right? Let's say, for example, you're interested in diplomacy, right? Why did one U.S. Dipl diplomatic act work where another didn't, right? You know, why were we more successful in the Korean War where we were, you know, 100% we failed in the Vietnam War, right? You know, why has Russia expanded when, you know, why did it fail in Afghanistan, right? Which it did, just like we failed in Vietnam. You know, all of these things, if you're interested in, 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 in gender rights, do something on gender, right? You could even do something in the United States. Why does Massachusetts, I'm from Massachusetts, so sorry, uh, have better health care and education than, say, I don't know, Texas, sorry, people from Texas. I know you're very nationalistic. Uh, why? You know, why? What are the different colonization processes, right? There's really good papers on, say, why did the United States kind of industrialize where, you know, Latin America and lots of the south, southern part of the United States didn't. You know, it's part of colonization and you go through it. It's pretty interesting. So there's a lot you can do and you can really, what I want you to think about too is do something that might help you with your career because when you start applying for things, uh, maybe um, uh, scholarships, internships, uh, law school, graduate school, they might want, well, they usually do, some kind of sample paper. Not always, but they do. I mean, it would be a great time to take advantage of that and do a sample paper. There was one girl, she had me in another class and she got into Columbia to study a master's. And it was really cool. She used the paper she did in my like political violence class, uh, one of my classes. And, you know, so they always kind of want that sample paper. And this would be kind of cool to show you do something. Now, you don't have to do something on statistics yet. I actually teach the statistics with RR Studio, but that's uh, in class. And they have to do a statistical paper. You you can choose to do something more with descriptive statistics if you if you feel comfortable with that, where you analyze something, etc. Um, but I usually don't make people run statistical analyses until they're in the stats class. But if you are interested in our studio, be my guest. Uh, but that's it. You know, I, I hope you find something that really interests you. 
And depending on, well, just your interests or what you want to do for a career, maybe you just want to do the paper for fun. But research methods is important, but I think it opens the door to a lot of uh, fun type of research. You could also do historical research, um, you know, why two countries went in different directions. Barrington Moore uh, became famous for writing, why did some countries go, uh, you know, democratic like the United States and France and, you know, uh, others like Cambodia, Russia did not. And he talks about the bourgeois class basically the middle class and without that they went to a more you know uh, uh uh communist society a socialist and then some others like germany where he talks about the revolution that brought in uh the more fascism it's pretty interesting on his research and theater scope paul did stuff like this too uh why china became a communist country it's very interesting so 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 basically do what you think is is good for you good for your career don't just placate me and do something that really interests you so you're not bored with writing the paper. Okay, everyone, take care and leave any questions about the paper in community forums.